There was a study done in 2003 with a group of young adults and one half of them were supposed to journal every day about the things that they were grateful for. The other half were supposed to continue to journal about the things that annoyed them each day. Now, as you can probably imagine, one of the groups did a lot better than the other group in terms of positive attitude. Yes, it's true that the people who actually listed the things they were grateful for on a regular basis experienced more energy, more determination, they had a total boost in mood, they were less depressed, and they also had a great amount of enthusiasm and attention to give to their lives. And I think what is so cool about this is it really just strongly correlates that it really comes down to our perspective or our mindset which determines then how we experience life. I've been studying a lot about procrastination and I'm super excited because I have a little nugget that I think is truly the secret to overcoming procrastination and it's not one that you normally hear. Well, hi there, my name is Dawn, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, a homeschooling mom, and a Jesus lover. And if we haven't met before, Living by Heart is all about inspiring you to connect more deeply with God and your family. All of these things can happen around us or to us or in our nation, in our cities, in our families, in our relationships. But at the end of the day, we get to choose how to respond. Well, when it comes to procrastination, it is highly associated with negative thinking. And so negative thinking in this case would be, for example, fear of failure, maybe fear of not measuring up or not meeting expectations. It also could be a fear of taking risks. Sometimes it's even fear of success. The central issue is really one of fear. If we can correlate that procrastination is actually fear in disguise, I'm going to suggest that we can combat it with one key thing. And going back to our study, honestly, the key that unlocks procrastination is gratitude. And here's what I think that looks like. I actually personally have experienced this just recently. I was sort of complaining, you could say. I mean, if I'm gonna to be totally real, I was complaining about my duties as a homeschool mom, getting it all done, as well as being a therapist and a YouTuber. I was feeling the stress and the pressure of all of those roles at once. And, and to be quite honest, I just kind of wanted to quit. I just wanted to quit something. <laughs> and it just happens to be a very busy season. And so as a result, I found myself kind of putting things off or avoiding certain things, but really it came down to a negative mindset. And I really brought it to God and I felt like God challenged me with something and it was highly convicting. And I don't say it to convict you. This is really just sharing how it impacted me. It does raise an interesting question to ask ourselves and that is, why do we think that we have all this time? That is what the Lord spoke to me. He was like, Dawn, you are overwhelmed. You are procrastinating. Why do you think that you have endless time to accomplish the things that I've asked you to do? And he began to show me that I was kind of acting ungrateful for the different things that he's gifted me with. He's gifted me with time to school my kids and to have relationship with them. He has gifted me with a thriving private practice where I get to influence people's lives and be part of watching what God does to heal people and set them free. I mean, come on, that's so awesome. And he's given me this wonderful group of people on YouTube that I get to speak to who actually want to hear what I had to say and I get to help them too. And so he began to show me that my procrastination was a form of ingratitude and I did feel that sense of, oh, you're right. God, I haven't been thankful. I haven't realized what a gift it is to have these opportunities. And yes, it's a stressful season in terms of balancing it all as a mom, but I am so thankful that he has given me all of these opportunities. And so out of that thankfulness, 
I felt energy. I felt this energy come to my soul and I kind of felt like all those fears kind of shook loose. And so gratitude really unlocks overcoming of procrastination. It is the key. What are the areas of your life that you find yourself avoiding? What are the areas that you hold back from? What are you afraid of failing at? What do you know deep inside you're supposed to do, but you're avoiding doing? I read this fascinating article about procrastination and how to overcome it. And one of the key points was to really start with the dreaded task first. <laughs> Actually, there are two kinds of people in the world. There are those that eat their vegetables first, when they have their meal, you know, they have a healthy serving of vegetables as we all should at every meal. And they eat it first because they know that that needs to be done no matter what. And it's not about how they feel, they just know they need to do it. And then there's the group of people who leaves the vegetables to be very last on their plate and they enjoy everything else and then they very painstakingly get through <laughs> the vegetables. <laughs> I'm personally picturing my kids right now, like how they're eating their vegetables. Very funny. It's kind of a personality test in itself. In order to become non-procrastinators, in order to become overcomers of procrastination, we need to be the veggies first kind of people. And that really spoke to me to really go after the things that even if we don't like it, we do it because we know it's good for us. We know that it needs to be done and to recognize that each day is a gift and I don't have unlimited days. That is a sobering realization, right? Even scripture says to us, men are like grass. Our lives are just a wisp. And so for me to have sort of that attitude of procrastination, I realized was taking for granted the time that God has given me. It's treating it almost cavalierly rather than treasuring it and saying, okay, God, this is what you're asking me to do with my time today. I have a dear friend, Vicki, who literally throughout the day talks to Jesus and asks him what to do next. And so when you talk to Vicki, she says, well, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to ask Jesus. And so she literally lives moment by moment and prays without ceasing, just as the word tells us to. And what's amazing about that is she never encounters procrastination because she's so in step with Jesus that she really just does what he tells her to do. There isn't ever a separation. She's always consulting him, talking with him. Sometimes he tells her to take a nap. Other times he tells her to dig in and work hard on something. The point is her whole life and day and time she recognizes is not her own. It belongs to him in the first place. And as we know, he is the one that gives us the power and the strength and the energy to do all of the things that he's called us to do. And we don't have to feel heavy about it and it doesn't need to feel overwhelming and we don't need to worry about failing. But sometimes that's where we get stuck. Okay. Practically speaking, I want you to think about what tasks am I avoiding on the regular? How can I surrender those to God? How can I live out my gratitude? It might be journaling. I am grateful for the job, whatever. I am grateful for the vegetables on my plate. There are all kinds of hacks and tips and tricks out there in terms of overcoming the actual act of getting started. But first, our heart posture has to be one of gratitude. Tell me this week how that adjustment impacts you and how that perspective gives you energy to accomplish what God is calling you to do.